in the last video I did on the channel, how to show an assembly in two different positions on the same drawing, hashtag pro fit title, uh, I used positional representations to solve a problem. Uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do a video on the entirety of positional representations, because the videos I do, which are entire modules, tutorials on entire modules, they tend to be the most popular videos on the channel, which means they're the most in demand. So I thought this is a good contender, it's a good candidate for that. Reet, position representations, this is going to be a long one. I'm going to explain what they are, how to create them, uh, and then how you can use them downstream in different areas to benefit you and different people uh, once you've made them. Because they are really quite useful. They are very simple as well, but they're very, very effective. And they're not mandatory. You can get away with never using these, but they're just a good little tool to have in your arsenal. Uh, just to pull out the bag and show everyone how much of a baller you are uh, and how much of a pay rise you deserve. Right, you, oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Right, so I'm using my TFI robot here. Right, this is a very simple assembly, but... It's representative and typical of every other assembly that can move. My robot can be in various different positions, right? When the robot's off, for example, it can be in the resting position. Alternatively, when it's working, it can be kind of up like this. So I need to show other people saved configurations of the model at this position and at that position, for example. And that's representative of millions of other types of things, cranes, vehicles, conveyor units, they can be in different positions as they're working. So you can just change a constraint and make it like that and make it like that. Not a problem, but you might want to save that state so it just the double click of a button, it just moves straight away and goes straight to those other positions. That's the whole point of positional representations and there's, there's other points to them later on which I'll show you. So, positional representations. How do you create them? In your browser on the left-hand side, as long as you're using a version of Inventor that's not like 13 years old, you should have a representations folder here. Expand that and you should see a position entity here. And it, if you haven't used them before, it'll be empty. It'll have nothing in it. So there's nothing that you can do with it right now. Uh, so what we do is we create new positional, this should be called configurations to be honest like because configuration I think is a more recognizable word for non-native English speakers rather than representations. So a positional configuration is probably more of an appropriate uh, description for what it is but I have to call them positional representations and I might abbreviate it to pos reps because you know, pos position representations reps because there's just too many syllables in the original word. Z Read positional represent pause reps. <laughs> they work with constraints mostly. Uh, you create constraints on your model that you want to change or that you can change later on, and the constraints will move the model into its different positions. So in my case, in my case, I'm going to create a constraint. It's going to be an angular constraint, a directed angular constraint between this face here and let's just drop it onto this face here. Right. So that zero degrees angular constraint is going to force my robot into the go to sleep night night position and then i can rename this constraint as well this bit's not massively important but it can help you sort of six months later when, when you've forgotten exactly what you've done or someone else needs to figure out what it is that you've done you can hit this little arrow button here and then name your constraint give it a name so i can say this is the robot lift angle or something like that and then press apply All right what that's going to do is against the parts that the constraint was placed against there's the constraint and you can see it's called robot lift angle and it's at zero degrees if i change that to 45 degrees that angular constraint raises the robot up to 45 degrees i can type in 90 i can type in 125 whatever but that's the angular constraint that controls the movement of the robot i've also got various other constraints already pre-created in here like for example angle twist i don't even know what that one does for you all right so that rotates this top arm bit here uh, and i've got constraints which sort of turn the entire robot and turn this bit here so there's various constraints in the model which turn and move different bits again that's typical of what you might have in your model constraints that change the position of various parts in your assembly once you've got those constraints created, you're now ready to create a positional representation. It's highly recommended that you create your constraints before you make your positional representations. We're going to right-click on position and then create a new position. That gives us our first saved positional configuration. And Inventor calls it position 1 and immediately activates it. So I'm going to rename this just with a slow double-click to call this robot uh, resting position. I don't even need to put the word robot in front of it because we know it's a robot. The assembly is robot. We're just going to call it resting position. No, not 
resting position. Okay, so now that I've named it correctly and I've spelt it properly, uh, that positional representation is active, but obviously nothing's changed. But that's because the master, which is the default assembly, never changed its resting position. It's as it was when it was modeled. The master positional representation is the same as the resting position. It's it's at zero. The robot lift angle is already at zero, so I don't need to do anything in this one here. I need to then make another positional representation, and I'm going to rename this one to uh, at 45 degrees. Right, so obviously the robot hasn't just immediately moved. Why? Well, because Inventor doesn't know what it's got to do to move that robot to 45 degrees. We've got to tell it that. So whilst, and this bit's really important, whilst this pos rep is ticked at 45 degrees, I go to the constraint that I want to change, right click on it, and then you override the value of the constraint. Whilst that pos rep is ticked, we're going to override the value of that constraint to be something else. So we can go to the dialog box that it gives us, override object, that constraint, we're going to override the value to be 45 degrees whilst that pause rep is activated. And the good thing about Inventor here is that every constraint that's been overridden at that pause rep is highlighted in bold. So if we want to twist this arm as well here whilst that pause rep is activated, we can right click on that one, override that, and then we can change this one to, I don't know, 20 degrees or something. And you can see that one goes bold as well. So at the resting position, double click that. You can see it puts everything back to zero. The robot lift angle is at zero degrees. And then we can double click at 45 degrees. And it just immediately activates that constraint to be 45 degrees. And then that one to be 20 degrees. And you can go nuts with this. You can override as many as you want. And then they'll all change immediately as soon as you activate that positional representation. And you can see why I've I wanted to call them positional configurations because you're configuring the position uh, at this state here. Right, that's at 45 degrees. We can right click on here again, go to new, we can make another one, and then we can just start overriding the constraints uh, as we see fit. A tip though, right, let's just delete this, uh, this one we've just made. A tip is rather than have to, you see what, you see what happened there, right? When I make a new one, Everything's gone back to zero, right? Robot lift angles at zero, twists at zero. So we'd have to go, oh, what was, it's moving from there to there to there. Which constraints did I override again? Rather than do that and have to remember which constraints to, to activate and to, to override, all you do is right click on the, the, the last positional rep that you made and then just copy it. Just copy it. We'll call this one at 90 degrees. If I can spell it, there we are double click that and then it's given us sort of a template to start from for model for modifying this pos rep so at 90 degrees we can go to robot lift angle which is already in bold because it copied it from that one there and we can just change that to 90 and then we can come to this one here we can put that back to zero for example and then that's it that's all you do and you can like i say you can go nuts with this we can copy it again and we can say uh, at 90 degrees uh, with a twist or something you know with with twist so whilst this one's ticked, we can go to the base of the of the robot, and then I can modify this robot twist constraint to be, I don't know, 45 degrees or something. That just turns the robot. So we'll start at the resting position at 45 degrees, at 90, and then at 90 with a twist. And you can go nuts with this. They don't have to be in order. It doesn't have to be like the charting of movement from resting position to a fully activated function. They can be anything you want, absolutely anything you want. And you can have as many of them as you want uh, with as many overrides as you want. Just, just do everybody a favor. When you're creating these, name them something meaningful because if someone else has to work on your assemblies later on and you, they've, you haven't named them properly, they'll have not have a clue what any of these mean. So it's a good idea to name them properly. Uh, right, so that's how you create positional representations. Why are we doing this though? Why are we doing this apart from that it looks cool as balls? Right, well, there's a few reasons why you do this. I'm going to save this assembly. Uh, right, you can't save it whilst the positional representation is activated. It's just got to be saved whilst it's in the master position. I have no idea why, but it's just one of those things. So we're going to save that. Right, so why do we do this? Well, first things first, this is useful for just visibly showing people 
the robot can be in that position and at that position. It's good for validating movement. It's good for validating uh, if there's any clashes as the components are moving. As this moves up, is it clashing against other objects in the environment? That kind of thing. That's one good reason. Uh, and another good reason is if we create another assembly and we place the robot into here. So I'm going to go place, select the robot, and then drop it in. We'll just right click and ground that at the origin. Uh, what we can do is we can create multiple instances. Obviously, you can do. You can do this without position representations, but you can place the robot multiple times uh, in an assembly, and it's placing it in its default state. But you can select one of these robots, and then on the right-click menu, you've got a representation option on the right-click menu, which has always been there. It just probably means something now. This pops up, and we can say that instance of the four identical robots and just actually before i do this i just want to show you what happens if you don't do position representation like if we go back to the original assembly and then edit one of the constraints the the lift angle and make that 45 degrees and then come back to this assembly you can see that all move up because it's it's a copy of the same assembly so you might want to show the robot in different positions without having to create a, you know a save as and have dozens and dozens of the same assembly so we can uh, we'll put this back down to zero. Uh, we we'll have to edit that first zero degrees. Go back to our assembly. What you do is you select the the first instance, right click, go to representation, and we can say I want to show this instance at the forty five degree angle position. Right click on this one, and then I want to show this one at the ninety degree instance. See what I mean? And then you can have different positions of the same assembly placed into uh, into a high level assembly so it's the same assembly it's just showing it at different representational states that's really really useful that saves you a lot of hassle it really will save you a lot of hassle if this is the kind of thing you need to do uh, you might not be doing robots on an assembly line but it could be anything so that's one reason where you'd use positional representations another place you'd use positional representations is in a drawing right so in the previous video, what I did was I placed two views. Let's let's look at it from the side. So I placed one view there, and then I placed another view over here. So I've got two views of the same assembly on the same drawing. We then went to the first, or well, went to the second view, and then we changed the position. So on the component tab in the edit view dialog box, you can change the position of that view to represent one of the other positional representations. And then so you've got now the resting position and you've got it at the 45 degree position, not a problem. But you can also use something called overlay views. So this button here, again, it's been in there for years. It's been an inventor for a long time, but an overlay view will kind of like paste. It'll paste the positional representation over the top of this view. So you say to inventor, I want to create an overlay view, click that view, it queries the assembly and it goes, oi, oi, what other positions can you be in? And then the assembly goes, well, Sunshine, now that you've asked me, uh, now that you mention it, funnily enough, I can also be at the 45 degree position. And then it'll give you like this dotted, dashed overlay. It's, it's, it, and that's really powerful. That is really powerful. You can then use annotations to, to actually chart and, and help somebody understand what this is. Well, between there and there, for example, it's a 45 degree angle. Of course it is, because we, we've just made it. And then we can do, on the same view, we can do an overlay again on here, and we can also show it at the 90 degree angle, like that. And then you can go to the first view, make that shaded, so you've got this sort of colorful thing with it going up and up and up. So that's overlay views that can be used for that as well. That is also extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful and extremely useful. To do this manually, <laughs> hopefully you would not want to do this manually. You could do but it would take you probably half a day to do that, and I'd rather not. So that's a, that's a second downstream function that you can use your position representations for. Uh, and if just before, just before someone jumps into the comments and goes, oh, there's another way of doing it. There's a much more efficient way of doing it, right? When, you, when you're using the first method, right, when you're placing your assembly into another assembly, you can click the options button here and say, before I place it, I know I want to use the 45 degree position click OK, click Open, and then when you've dropped it in, it'll go poof, and then it'll pop up to the 45 degree position straight away. And that just saves you a job of having to right click and then do that afterwards. So that there is that. Someone would have piped up and said that, so I thought I'll just preempt that 
you know what people are like you know, trying to catch you out all the time anyway right the, the third useful way there's probably more there's probably more things you can use them for I just off the top of my head I can't think what they are but this third use of a position representation is for full motion uh, demonstration using Invent Studio which is uh, as I've said before a steaming pile of cow feces but it does have its uses so if you jump or jump on over to Inventor Studio, uh, we can use the animation timeline to actually physically animate your model moving between the position representations, which is like whoa, whoa! This saves you a lot of hassle. Now we've done we've done a lot of the work already, so there's very little to do here. So we're going to enable the animation timeline in Inventor Studio, and then I'm going to select this button down here, right? Animation options, and we'll say, right, I want 10 seconds of animation. Let's just make this quick. 10 seconds of animation, and over the 10 seconds, I want to show the robot moving between the different positional states. So we're starting at the resting position. We animate pause reps see i wasn't making it up it's a thing pause reps so starting at zero seconds right at the beginning and then ending at i don't know two seconds we're going to animate starting at resting position going to at 45 degrees at zero we're going to be there at two seconds we're going to be at that pause rep click ok it's now moved the timeline to two seconds and you can see the robots moved up to the 45 degree position representation and we can then do it again animate pause reps and then we can go specify from i think yeah you can just click that button then it sets it to the current time which is two seconds from two to four seconds we're going to go from at 45 degrees to at 90 degrees click ok and i mean pause reps specify from four seconds to six seconds we're going to go from at 90 degrees to uh, at 90 degrees with a twist and that's that's six seconds not 10 never mind <laughs> never mind that's fine click ok and we can change this down to six seconds just so we're gonna have four seconds of wasted time at the end of the timeline and then we can wind this back to the start hit play and now it's going to animate up to 45 degrees then up to 90 and then to 90 with a twist look at that and you can now animate this entire storyboard type thing using your positional representations in Vent Studio. Hit render animation, boom, off you go, uh, which I'm not going to do because that would be something I would do in an Inventor Studio tutorial. But there you are, look at that. You do need quite a powerful beast of a PC for it to be smooth animating positional representations. I've got a Coffee Lake 8700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz here, so that's. Uh, that's as fast as it's actually going to get, if I'm honest. It ain't getting any faster than that. That's as smooth as Inventor's going to go with position representations, but it does depend on your assembly size and how much movement it is and uh, a load of other things, but I, I digress. We're deviating off the point there. But there you go. That's positional representations. They are extremely useful. They are really useful. When you do an export as well, when you do like an export to a, a Dwarf or to... I'm not, I'm not sure a PDF. I don't know. I'm not going to say it will because I haven't tested it, but I do know to a DWF file, you can choose to do a complete DWF file and it'll include the position representations in the DWIF file. I'm going to do it because I'm sort of speaking and I'm doubting myself as I'm saying it, but I'm pretty sure that it will include the position representations. <laughs> I'm thinking, shit, is it? Is it actually going to do it? I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's see if it does. It should burn the position representations into the DWF though. Uh, I'm going to minimize this so it does fit into the screen so you can see it. Uh, right, markups model. Expand this. Uh, where are they? Uh, have I just have I just talked absolute lies? Surely it does. I'm. Pr Hang on a minute. Did I just see it? Views, published views, representations, positions. There they are. Look at that. There you go. So they do burn into a DWIF file as well. So if you're sending this model out to a, a supplier or a client, like here's your model so far, this, these are the different positions that it can be in, you can actually use this dying file format to show somebody it's in its different positions. There you go. God, that worked. I really didn't fancy just having to edit that out and pretend like I never said it. Anyway, that'll do it for this one, guys. That is position. Oh, seriously, Autodesk? This is why nobody uses your, your stupid DWIF format. It's garbage. If you, your own proprietary file format, it can't handle your own bloody file. Never mind. Rah, to rant for a different day. 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, positional representations with assemblies. They are extremely powerful, genuinely, uh, and in all seriousness, they are there to be used to show your model in different positional configurations. Use them, embrace them. They're very powerful. They'll make you look like an absolute baller, uh, like a genius, and uh, pay rise is uh, inevitable. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Render Wars, I'm about to put together Render Wars episode number two. If you haven't submitted already and you've got some nice sexual renders that you want to put into Render Wars, hit up the uh, hit up my channel, my previous videos, and you should see the entry instructions for, uh, for how to send into Render Wars. The prize has been decided, and I'm going to announce that in episode two. Uh, yeah, I got some jip off one person who's like, oh, shaking my head. A prize not decided. Yeah, yeah, come on, shut, my, shut, your, shut your pie hole. Anyway, Reet, <laughs> thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.